It's 4.30 and this is WKYT This Morning, an eventful first day of school for some kids whose school bus crashed into a car. More on the arrest that followed that just ahead this morning. And a Pendleton County community was shut down for hours after a train derailment. We'll hear from some people who were affected by this coming up. Also this morning, we have an update for you on the results of tests done on that oily substance that spewed in a Powell County community after a lightning strike. That in your weather forecast on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. So good to have you with us on WKYT on this Thursday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get a check of what the weather's looking like in store for us on this day before Friday with Micah. Yeah, we're looking at some showers to the northern zones at this moment, but those are still moving northbound. We still have to watch down in Tennessee and southern Kentucky to see if we're going to be getting rain anytime soon. But a few sprinkles here and there northbound. 77 degrees right now in Frankfort. Lexington coming in close to 80 degrees. At this moment, we're sitting here at 4:31 in the morning. It's incredible the way it feels outside. It's awful. And then we get into the afternoon. It doesn't get any better. 89 degrees is pretty much where we finished off yesterday. Just a few more storms in the forecast. We're slowly hitting at it with these thunderstorms each and every day. Uh, some get them, some do not. And when you don't, it's very muggy. But the weekend, yeah, especially late in the weekend, I'll show you some widespread rain. That's coming up. Okay, we'll see you in just a bit, Mike. Thank you. The first day of school had a rough ending for some students in Anderson County. Police say their school bus hit a car in Lawrenceburg. Two of the students went to the hospital as a precaution. Police then arrested the driver of the car because they say he was drunk. To BKYT's Monique Blair talked to a student who was on the bus. For Allie Monroe, the first day of school is always nerve wracking. This year, especially with three kids going to three different schools. I just was like, hey, this day is going great. I got them all off, you know, they're coming home on time. The first day was moving along without a hitch. That is until it was time for a school bus to drop off Monroe's daughter, high school freshman Sophia Thompson. Neighbors tell me the bus was driving here on Canterbury Street when the bus driver realized she missed Sophia Thompson's stop. So the bus driver actually reversed the bus. And that's when she hit the car Billy Cecil was driving. It's the first thing you think, you see that, you, you worry, you know, it's the kids. Everyone was really confused on what happened. We just, we didn't know until we saw the car behind us. Sure enough, there was a car that was right underneath the bus. The bus had just went over it barely. About 40 students, ranging from elementary to high school, were on the bus. Two students were taken to the hospital for what Lawrenceburg police say were minor injuries. But police discovered the driver of the car that the bus hit, 35 year old Billy Cecil, was intoxicated. Police say Cecil had a blood alcohol level that was more than three times the legal limit. Cecil was arrested and the kids were kept at the scene for about 45 minutes. But parents say the situation. Could have been worse. You know, they, the bus backed into him, and they found that he was intoxicated. You know, maybe he could have, if it hadn't happened, maybe he'd have went on, and something worse could have occurred. So, you know, maybe it was meant to happen. That, you know, got him off the street. In Anderson County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Thanks so much, Monique. The bus driver has not been charged. Parents tell us they credit her with thinking quickly and keeping the situation under control until help arrived. We're tracking the investigation into a deadly motorcycle crash in Laurel County. It happened about 6.30 last night on Highway 192 west of London. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says a motorcycle crossed the center line and hit a van that had just pulled out of a driveway. Investigators say the man riding the motorcycle, 30-year-old William Hayes of Richmond, died at the scene. They say a passenger in the van was taken to the hospital with some injuries. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused nearly two dozen cars of a train to derail in downtown Falmouth in Pendleton County. This video from Officer Don in Sky First shows the mess that crews now have to clean up this morning. Because the train was carrying hazardous materials, emergency crews issued evacuation and shelter in place orders for much of the Pendleton County town. Those orders were lifted yesterday afternoon after investigators say they realized the community was not in danger. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to some people who live near the derailment. Crews are still out here. They say it could take days to get it all cleaned up. Meanwhile, slowly but surely, life here in Falmouth is starting to get back to normal after a day that was anything but. I mean, our house could have got ran over. Things could have happened. It was a close call. 
Neighbors took these pictures after the train derailed. The cars ended up just yards from homes there. It's just like a crazy wrong place, wrong time, natural disaster type thing. <laughs> Tiffany McCoy says she was on her way to work when the train derailed. Her brother, who works third shift, was home sleeping. He says he hears this crazy train noise and he's like, wow, you know, this train is like something's up. And he's kind of falling back asleep and thinks the next thing he knows, people's banging on his door like, you need to evacuate, we're evacuating the neighborhood. Some were evacuated, others told to shelter in place. A through L, that one. Nearby Southern Elementary School evacuated as well. Falmouth was basically shut down for hours. Roads into town were closed. The power was out. Many businesses shut their doors. Our damage assessment team has been out there, the, the hazmat team, and they found out there's no hazmat leaking at all. That news came as a relief to many. But some, for whom this all was just too close to home, still don't plan on sticking around. I think we're going to go for a few days because it's right in our backyard. We're going to just let it settle, see what happens, make sure everything's safe, and then just go. Still, many say this whole situation could have been much worse. They're glad it wasn't. In Falmouth, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And CSX train officials say that it was heading from Cincinnati to Atlanta. They say in all, 23 cars went off the tracks. We're learning more about a Butler County pastor and his wife who police say were found dead in their home. Police say Kenneth and Dorothy Nafus were found Tuesday. Now police think foul play was involved and they suspect the uh, suspect left the scene injured. But so far, police haven't made any arrests. Neighbors say Kenneth was the pastor of a nearby Presbyterian church, but he had been in poor health recently. They say they can't understand why someone would want to kill the couple. Very sweet, very helpful, there for you anytime, uh, uh, friendly. Dorothy was just very friendly, um, loved to talk. State police say the bodies have been taken to the state medical examiner's office to determine an exact cause of death. A Laurel County jury has convicted a man accused of killing his girlfriend. Christopher Byrd has been charged with murder. Yesterday, prosecutors say the jury found him guilty of reckless homicide and recommended a one-year sentence. Police say Byrd shot and killed Shannon Engel last year during an argument. He'll be formally sentenced August 19th. A central Kentucky police officer says he was the target of a threatening letter that was sent to the city's mayor. Bergen police officer Casey Rucker says the letter that arrived at Bergen City Hall Tuesday threatened both him and his family. Officer Rucker says the letter claimed he would be harmed. He says the letter also asked the mayor to, quote, rein in your new immature cop. Officer Rucker says he is the only active police officer in Bergen with the chief now on medical leave. He says the letter won't stop him from doing his job, but he's also worried about his family. My wife and my child, my child's three. She has no clue, but my wife, she has to constantly watch her back as well as mine. State police are investigating the threatening letter, but at last check, they did not know exactly where it came from. Investigators in Florida have not said how a gun with live ammunition ended up being used during a police demonstration killing a woman. They say Punta Gorda officer Lee Cole accidentally shot and killed 73-year-old Mary Knowlton Tuesday night. Police say Knowlton had been randomly selected to take part in a role-playing scenario during a demonstration of police tactics for the community. A newspaper reporter was at the event and took pictures until the moment Knowlton was shot. Knowlton's family says they are in shock. She, uh, she was a incredible woman and uh, I just wish I had one more day with her. Police say the gun involved in the shooting is a revolver that has been used with blank rounds for the last two years at these types of demonstrations. No one had ever been injured before. Amazing. Well, we have new information about an oily substance that ended up on some homes in Powell County last week. Investigators say the substance sprayed onto those homes after lightning hit a nearby gas substation. The owner of the substation, Kinder Morgan, now says tests of the substance show there should be no short-term health effects associated from it. The company says tests do not indicate a concern for long-term health effects. Some families, though, are still staying elsewhere as a precaution, and Kinder Morgan says it will continue coordinating work and school transportation arrangements for them. All right, an issue there, certainly. Our time this morning is 439. Good to have you with us as you rise and shine on your Thursday. WKYT this morning is just getting started. We know adults can suffer from sleep apnea. Coming up in today's Mom's Everyday Minute, we'll introduce you to a mother whose son, very young, was diagnosed.
A couple of showers in northern Kentucky. Other than that, it's really not bad this morning. It's a little humid. And it's going to be that way the next couple of days, but it's the weekend we're focused in on. I'll show you that in your forecast coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're looking at 78 degrees early this morning. 78, near 80 degrees here in Lexington. That is not a good feel when you step out the door. 79. That actually takes the cake up north in Covington. So it's one of those mornings you walk outside, you're not seeing any rain around much of the region. There's still a couple of showers far northern Kentucky trying to roll northbound and get on out of here across 71 corridor if you work your way up towards, say, Carroll, Gallatin, and Trimble counties. But that's moving northbound, so it's not heading into the region. It's heading out of the region. So all of us will be dry here in just about 30, 45 minutes. So we go through the day. Here's the look. By noontime, there's still not much going on. By the afternoon, still small chance of rain. It's kind of that scattered activity that we saw yesterday and we saw the day before. Day before, obviously, we had a few more storms, but uh, yesterday, yeah, it was just kind of scattered out and about. Some saw the rain, some did not. If you do not see the rain, I mean, you know what you get when you see the rain. It's going to be heavy rain, obviously. I mean, it's very sticky outside, but if you do not, it's 89 degrees. Throw in all of that moisture, that humidity. It'll feel like the mid 90s once again later on this afternoon, as we did yesterday and the day before. So let's talk about this high resolution model. When do we expect some storms to appear? Obviously, there's just not much going on. I mean, look across this. Yeah, you get a few sparking up down south and they'll start to move on in, but it's just bits and pieces here and there. It's one of those days that, once again, look at Richmond, not seeing rain, but you go down in Lincoln County or off into, say, Jackson County, and there you go at 4 p.m., at least seeing a passing shower or thunderstorm. That's just the way it's going to go today and tomorrow. Not everybody will see the rain, and this is fantastic news for us. And I'll tell you why, because we're drying things out. I mean, we're really doing that for most zones, not all zones, but most zones. And this is what we've been talking about the past few days. If we can just dry most places out, this is going to help us out tremendously. And we'll do that today. We'll do that tomorrow. Because remember, today and tomorrow is not a great chance of rain. Smaller opportunities. But Saturday, I would say Saturday, it's really late in the day. So it's not an all-day thing. It's not a great chance during the day. It's late in the day, off into the evening hours. Sunday off into Monday still look like the best opportunity to see some rain as it passes on through. So that's something to watch out for. Another thing to watch out for is how long will it stick with us? Still, as of right now, I have no change in my forecast. Sunday into Monday, guys, will be the best opportunity to see some of that rain. Got any events? Just know that on those days, it doesn't look like a complete washout. Mm -hmm. But it looks like a pretty good shot at it, at okay, least. Okay, keep that in mind. Sounds a little more hopeful now. Well, yeah, we're trying to lean toward the dry side. Yeah, trying. I know. We're pushing. It's Thank you. Time. Mike, it's 445 on WKYT. And according to the National Sleep Foundation, 18 million American adults have sleep apnea. But did you know children can be affected by this as well? Here's one child story in today's Mom's Everyday Minute. When this little guy was just six months old, he started getting upper respiratory infections. But it was something else that made his mother worry. When he would be real congested, he would stop breathing in his sleep. And so I thought it was just maybe from the congestion. But when the congestion cleared up, the problem persisted. I see you. Trevor's doctor referred him to Carilion Pediatric Pulmonologist Dr. Joseph Tamed. Trevor was sent to the Carilion Sleep Clinic, where he and his mom spent the night, and Trevor's sleep was monitored overnight. It confirmed what Tiffany had suspected. Her little boy had sleep apnea. In particularly the last decade or so, we've recognized the, the uh, prevalence of it. As many as 11% um, of children can have sleep breathing disturbance. Part of that is sleep apnea. Trevor now wears a CPAP machine that blows air into his upper airway to keep the airway open during his sleep. Not easy for a toddler. We're still working on him with it because he'll take it off at night. He'll pull it off, so I have to keep putting it back on throughout the night. So as you can imagine, something blowing your face all night, some youngsters don't like that. And it's a difficult therapy for even adults to get adjusted to. For Moms Every Day, I'm Jean Jadhun. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. 447 is the time this morning. It's good to have you along on WKYT this morning. And we're back with more news in just a moment. A man is facing charges after he scaled the Trump Tower in New York using suction cups. Why he says he did it when we return. 
Welcome back. It's 4.50 this morning. Charges are pending against a man police say tried to try, climb the top of the Trump Tower in New York City. Police now say the man claimed that he wanted a private meeting with Donald Trump to discuss an important matter. But as Kenneth Craig tells us, the Republican presidential nominee wasn't even there at the time. A man used suction cups rigged to a harness to scale Trump Tower in New York City Wednesday. For nearly three hours, the 20 year old dodged police. Officers smashed windows, removed glass, and cut holes in the building's ventilation ducts, but the climber just kept going. He's running away from the police, so when they come, he goes around the other side and then goes around the other side. On the 21st floor, two officers saw their window of opportunity and ended the chase. I took hold of his hand. And I said, sir, you need to come with me. Down below, the crowd watched in disbelief as the drama shut down parts of busy Fifth Avenue. My two main thoughts are, one, I'm glad everyone's OK. And second thought is, why? <laughs> the climber told police he wasn't going to stop until he got to the top of the tower where Donald Trump lives. But Trump wasn't here and instead was campaigning in Virginia, ironically, the climber's home state. The reason I climbed your tower was to get your attention. Police say the man posted this video on YouTube Tuesday. It's titled Message to Mr. Trump. In it, he asked for a personal meeting with the Republican presidential candidate. Police say the 20 year old will undergo a psychological evaluation. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York City. In a statement, a lawyer for Trump called this a ridiculous and dangerous stunt and said it caused some damage to the building as well. All right. We have new information about the case against a Clark County grandmother accused of starting a fire at her home. Anita Raleigh faces wanton endangerment and arson charges. During a hearing yesterday, a judge sent the case to a grand jury. Investigators say Raleigh claimed the fire last year at her home on Kidville Road started on a kitchen stove. But they later said that they figured out Raleigh started the fire after setting paper on fire during an argument. Investigators say multiple people were inside the home at the time, including her grandchildren. And the search continues for a man who police say stole an attorney's truck outside a Whitley County courtroom just a day after being released from jail. Police say 30 year old Johnny Mullis should be considered armed and dangerous. Corbin police say Tuesday he left a hearing and found the unlocked truck in the parking lot with the keys still in it. They say the truck also had two guns inside. Williamsburg police are helping with the search. They say Mullis has a lengthy criminal history. Well, a traffic alert for drivers planning on using New Circle Road in Lexington today. The Kentucky Department of Highways has planned pothole repair on New Circle between Lee's Town and Woodhill Drive. This will be a mobile operation, so the state asked drivers to look for the signs and flashing arrows. Potholes will be repaired between 9 this morning and 3 this afternoon. All right, so keep that in mind and uh, plan accordingly for a possible delays on New Circle. 453, coming up, a look at some of the news stories our team is working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. It's 4.56 on WKYT this morning. Welcome back. Time to take a look at some of the stories our team is working on for you this morning. Guests were evacuated from a Lexington hotel after an overnight fire. We'll have more details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Also, police suspect a Butler County pastor and his wife, who were found dead in their home, were murdered. Details on that investigation ahead on WKYT this morning. And we'll be watching weather carefully with a lot of folks now back in school and... You may be off to other things here on this Thursday. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, and people heading back to school today. Remember, not everybody went to school yesterday. Uh, still heading back to school today. Clark County goes back next week. So there still is some time for that first day of school. Uh, those jitters to get under control. Defender Radar Network, there is the look. Couple sprinkles up toward Gallatin, Carroll Counties. That's about it. Once we travel through your day, there is a chance of rain by the afternoon, but it's just like the past couple of days where you could see some rain or you couldn't. It's just kind of here and there. It's not really a line moving through, so don't expect rain, but just know you might have to plan around some. That's the way you can look at it for the forecast today and tomorrow. The weekend looks pretty rainy. I'll have that coming up.